This is a very unique airplane and I'm really excited about it because if this airplane had a major name brand label attached to the side of it, people would be over the moon about this thing. It's nice to see a ready to fly World War II bird that is of every level hobby grade quality. We have a nice big brushless motor. We're flying on a 2S. If this said FMS down the side, people would be pretty pumped about it. And when I put it together, it has every bit level of quality that I would expect in a nice little compact ready to fly setup. We have a JST plug. We've got two individual servos for the ailerons mounted on the wings, all the wires pre-ran. This was like a 10 minute assembly. We've got individual elevator and rudder control surfaces with their own independent servos. And I love the prop on this because that has got to be stolen from some race drone somewhere. That's definitely not designed specifically for that airplane, <laughs> but it should work. I also love that it comes with these optional drop tanks. So they're actually pressure fit in here. And I might try to fly on those today because I don't think they're going to go anywhere. That's a nice snug fit. And it'll probably remain that way for quite some time in and out uh, numerous times before that would wear out. But if you love them, you could always glue those in place. We also have optional landing gear so we could do asphalt takeoffs and landings if we so choose with even a tail wheel on here as well. But also I'm going to like flying this without that on because it'll look more realistic, more scale like the retracts are up. The setup that I have comes with two of these little 2S batteries. That is a 1300 milliamp JST plug. Really nice setup. Comes with a USB charge cable and I'm actually really impressed with the quality of this radio. For a ready to fly radio, this is significantly higher on the spectrum than most ready to fly airplanes that we come by. It just feels good, nice high level of quality and I'm excited to really put this all together and put it in the air and see how it does. So let's go. Launch for dense, Nate. Well, launch for dense is half, so let's go to the grass. <laughs> he does not have his launch for dense today. Launch with confidence. Oh yeah. I'm getting better every time now. Okay, this is with flight stabilized mode on and like super low throttle. This is definitely beginner friendly because it doesn't want to come down. That's almost zero throttle, so it's almost like a trainer. Which is nice, because uh, it's a ready to fly setup and a lot of first time flyers will want to buy something like this. I don't know if I've ever seen a good warbird that I could say is equivalent to a trainer. I'm actually hands free right now while I put my hood on to keep that wind out of my <laughs> ear because I got a little ear infection, so. Ah, okay. That's good if you can go hands free long enough to put a hood on. <laughs> <laughs> now what I don't like about this is the flight mode switch. The middle position, which is what I'm in now, is flight stabilized mode on. When I pull the switch all the way down or toward me, it's uh, equivalent of AS3X. So it keeps it nice and smooth, but you're out of flight stabilized mode. And then if you throw the switch all the way up, which you have to bypass uh, the stabilized mode again to get there, everything is off and you're just flying completely on your own. So. You know, these, these different brand birds, I like to put them in stabilized mode at first, just to see how they fly. And then we'll kind of take it out of stabilized mode and wake it up a little bit. So let's go AS3X equivalent. We should be able to roll. Oh my gosh, that's slow. Okay, I don't recommend that. Oh no, I don't want to lose another plane. Oh man, I thought you hit. Okay, we're back in stabilized how mode. How did you save that? Oh man. It just didn't want to turn wide or sharp enough. It was a very wide turn. If you crashed that one, you were going to get a sour reaction from me today. Oh, yeah. So Not a laugh. <laughs> just so you guys know, I, I just crashed a little airplane before I put this one in the air. People, because... used to, people used to get mad at me when I'd laugh when you crashed. And then the last crash, I was like, why did you do that? And people were okay with that reaction, <laughs> which I thought was rather mean. <laughs> <laughs> then rather than purpose. laughing, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> so this has definitely got some trainer tendencies to it. It's a slow flyer, if you guys can't tell. It's very quiet too with that three-bladed prop. Uh, I don't know who that is, green truck. Yeah, we've got a visitor here to probably watch fly. That's okay. Yep, that's what they're doing. Just cutting the video there. I do like having those drop tanks on. I think it looks really nice. And I think here in a minute, if I can get this down in one piece, 
we'll probably try uh, putting those landing gear on and seeing how it flies like that. I would Can like you to loop know. it? Huh? Can you loop it? Okay, let's take it out of stabilized mode completely. No AS3X equivalencies. There's a nice roll again. And no, 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 no. Okay, back it. So it saved it. It saved it. I had to rely. See, that was the switch. Stop rolling it. Well, the switch. <laughs> I had to I had to throw the switch and I didn't like the position. It, okay, so let's go off. Nope, nope. It does not want to. We're going to try one more time. Zero bonus. Yeah, I know. I'm, that's zero throttle. This thing doesn't want to come down unless I take it out of stabilized mode. Okay, you want to see a loop. Yeah? A loop. So off. Nosing it down. What in the world? Up. There's a loop. That was. There's a loop. That was a. There's a loop. Okay, we can loop it. All right. Okay. Stabilize oh mode on. Let's bring it in for landing. That Put was... that landing gear on. Crazy. It's a little quirky, okay? It's definitely got some quirky flying tendencies. Woo. If you fly it slow and Woo. stabilized, I gotta land in the grass. Oh, okay. It's okay. So let's put the gear on. <laughs> Flight stabilize mode, landing gear on. This thing has such a weird throttle delay. Just so you guys know, watch this. I'll jam the throttle. See the airplane too? Mm-hmm. See that? It has like a three second delay on the throttle. It's a we weird throttle curve, but hey, that's a pretty good, oh, I thought I was in. Nope, <laughs> definitely not in stabilize mode. <laughs> no, I'm in stabilize mode. I hate the position of those switches. Stabilize mode being in the middle is just weird compared to I don't know, 90% or more of the stuff that I fly that has stabilized mode, I feel like it should be on one end or the other. And usually that position would be all the way up. So there you have the landing gear on. The whole point of that is so we can do ground takeoffs and landings. I think it's ugly because it's just little wire wheels, uh, wire struts, I should say. And uh, I don't know, let's see if we can do a landing. It's probably gonna be pretty ugly. I would, I would just say shoot for grass with this on or off, but here we go. Okay, this is so touchy. Oh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> and there's no Four steering. Four out of ten, it. I think. There's no steering it on the ground, so I gotta go get it. <laughs> is that the walk of shame or the walk of pride because he is able to walk away with it in one piece? Let us know in the comments. I don't love wearing this hood, but I, I'm on an antibiotic for my ear infection, so I gotta keep the wind up. Oh, there. So check out this weird throttle curve, right? I'm gonna jam the throttle. See that? I've never seen an airplane, especially ready to fly, do that. Here. One more time, because that's so interesting. Like it starts, but it takes a second to get it's to red. Yeah, or it's something. almost like a gas engine. They might do that because warbirds on takeoff have a pull tendency, and so if you ease into throttle, sometimes it can help, but if you jam the throttle on takeoff, it would torque really hard, so maybe they did that to help newer pilots, because this is obviously targeted toward newer pilots, because it's a ready-to-fly setup. It's definitely not the most overly sensitive plane that I've ever flown. In fact, I think it's very sluggish. I think that if you're flying this in the stabilized mode, which is the middle position, okay, I put it up here so you don't have to hear the servos working when I'm talking, but if you fly it slow and like a trainer plane, I think you'll get enjoyment out of it. If you try to take it and do much else with it, in my opinion, it's not very capable of that. The roll rate's really slow and the loops were doable, but not really reflective on other airplanes in the hobby. So if you get this as one of your first planes don't let it be a strong reflection on what the hobby is capable of and what it has to offer because it's not a very good indicator of it but it'll put a ready to fly warbird in the air for you if that's kind of what you're after and i'll be honest over the last 10 years of doing this i can't tell you how many hundreds of times people have asked if there is a good ready to fly airplane out there that's a warbird and not like some ugly looking thing or some trainer Cessna style of airplanes. So, How does this compare to the Ishin lineup of warbirds? Uh, if you fly it slow and in trainer mode, it's nice because it's bigger and it's brushless and it's probably gonna give you much longer flight times. So that's nice, but I don't know. I think the Ishin birds are much cheaper. So those, those are like a standard. But, you know, they have their limitations too. It's a good question. It's a good question. I can't remember what the price point is on this. I'd say if it's any more than double the price of an Ishin bird, it's not worth it. 
All right, we just looked it up. Normally it's 180, and I would say that'd be a hard, yeah, okay, we're getting right on the line of maybe not being worth it, but Abby's got a coupon code, which is insane, to get it to 130. So now all of a sudden it is worth it because sometimes Ishin birds are 115 or so. Uh, if they're on sale, I've seen them for maybe 80, $85, but now this is on sale for 130. And you can thank Daniel for being awake during China time. <laughs> <laughs> so Abby works through the night to try to get you guys coupon codes. And in this case, if you're watching the video right when it's coming out and you're a subscriber and an active viewer, it literally pays because you get $50 off and that's a good deal. So at that price point, I say pull the trigger on it. Not for everybody, but if you were kind of drooling over it, wondering is it worth it, at that price point, absolutely. At 180, questionable, but still, if, it, if you love it, it's not overpriced or anything. It's just uh, on the verge of not being worth it. If it was $200, I'd say no, which is crazy because if that said, you know, UMX down the side or something, it would be worth that. So <laughs> using the link to buy this does help to support our channel and our family at no extra cost to you. And hopefully you guys appreciate those coupon codes and just the video in general and honesty and stuff. So it's there if you want to help support us. It's a great way to support us. I want to say massive thanks to God for blessing us with a beautiful day. Nice blue skies, very low winds to get out here and share this experience with you guys just for being awake today, breathing, and uh, being alive. Just the day in general, I wanna say a massive thanks to God. Also a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it without your amazing support. If you love good priced, ready to fly airplanes, we'll have a hand-picked video popping up right about now just for you. Thanks for watching, see you there. Bye.